Good afternoon, uh, table. Sorry, good afternoon, uh, Ghostmaster, fellow Ghostmasters, guests, uh, 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 Ghostmaster. We have uh, our panel of Nobel laureates uh, that are going to volunteer and talk to us about their Nobel Prize and uh, why they're going to talk about the meaning of their research or, or whatever uh, is the reason that they want a prize. So, if anyone wants to volunteer to be a laureate, uh, it's your only chance to ever be a Nobel Prize winner. <laughs> Okay. Just pick. Yeah, JD? No, no, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I said just choose. JD, what do you do? JD, in order, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, 2018, for the direct evolution of enzymes. So, Mr. JD, can, can you, you ask one? For the direct <laughs> evolution of enzymes, I forgot you won several Nobel enzymes. Prizes, so you're a little bit enzyme. Yeah, I don't know which one the Nobel Prize we are speaking about. So, yeah, we're talking about the evolution of enzymes. So, can you talk to us in uh, one minute? <laughs> how is it going to affect the development of new uh, drugs and help uh, humanity that way? Thank you, Mr. Fellow Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters, and guests. I don't know whether you can understand me to speak to you on a level that I understand chemistry, so I will try to dumb it down for you guys. <laughs> How will this affect the evolution of new drugs? Well, first of all, like Steven said, we will be working on making drugs less detected. So we want, for example, marijuana not to be able to be easily detectable. So we are working now on joining Mariona and Garlic, because let's face it, they all have very good medicinal benefits, and we want to take all the best benefits from there. Some people will say, in that case, if you work that, then the best way is to take all the negative benefits out there and join just the positive benefits. We tried that, but if you take all the negative benefits, there is no fun in that, you know. So we tried smoking, I didn't, obviously, I, I don't smoke that. Sure. We had uh, lab rats and mice and the other, they're heavy smokers, trust me, and we had them on smoking garlic, one uh, <laughs> test group, the other test group was smoking marijuana, and the other test group was smoking joint combination of marijuana and garlic. And guess what? The group that was smoking just garlic, nobody wanted to hang out with them. <laughs> the one that was smoking marijuana, they didn't want to hang out with anybody. So that led us to the, this possibility to join those two together, and since those guys were happy all the time, and yes, they stunk, but nobody cared because they were happy. They didn't notice they where they were, and they were happy. So we realized, hey guys, we all very overworked here. Would it be nice to <laughs> smoke something legal and make you happy all the time? We heard Mr. JD describe uh, his research done with enzymes wow. that are found in compounds like uh, cannabis and garlic. <laughs> and He's won the Nobel Prize for this innovative approach of mixing enzymes to get a new effects. And the most interesting thing is that they focus on the impact of be on behavior, which uh, I'm pretty sure we all bene will benefit from that. Another volunteer like uh, Chital. <laughs> Cancer therapy oh, wow. by inhibition of negative immune regulation. What? That is real. What? what? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So you have uh, developed, I as you have uh, read, a new therapy by inhibiting the negative in, uh, uh, immune system to regulate regulate cancer. Can you try to describe how this works? <laughs> it's very complicated when I read about it. Mm. So the discovery of a new process which works towards cancer. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. regulating the immune system. <laughs> 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 
Hi, good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters. Uh, I have been doing cancer uh, research since last few years. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one of the agents that causes cancer is plastic. So this is the research. Don't heat your food in plastic containers. <laughs> Don't put plastic containers in microwave. Don't use anything other than BPA-free plastic. <laughs> Try not to use soda which is packed in plastic containers. Use cans. <laughs> no, this is real. <laughs> It was, uh, it was an honor to have Ms. Chital here uh, talk about her research. I was hoping that she would be talking a little bit more about the mechanisms, how the negative uh, immune system had an impact on preventing the effect of plastic in the blood, but she did warn us about a practical, uh, practical approach, of which is not to use plastics in our food. Thank you very much. Uh, we're a little bit short on time, but one more. One more. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, Doug. We have Doug. Uh, one more. So one more. Doug has won the Nobel Prize in Physics for his a method of generating high-intensity ultra-short optical pulses. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please talk to us about what do you think is uh, this high intense uh, electrical ultra short optical pulses? What do you do with that? Uh, well, I figured I would raise my hand on this one because I'm thinking if there's ever a way to set yourself up for failure, it's this topic. <laughs> so I'm like, what are we going to do with high intensity ultra short optical pulses? Well, what we would use those for is in communication. Uh, network communication is now increasing in speed dramatically. We've gone from 1 gig to 10 gig, now we're at 25 gig. We've gone to 100 gig, but to get to 100 gig, we're having to use 425 gigs. And in addition to that, we're also having issues where we have to transmit much, much longer distances. So high intensity, short optical pulses would allow us to communicate over long periods of time, or long distances, say from like England to the United States. I don't know if a lot of people realize this, but there are huge, huge wire bundles underneath the ocean that run from England to the United States and also from Japan and other areas. And communicating on these things is actually very, very slow because the distances that you're using or that, that are on there allow the wave to um, expand. And so you have to use a lot of energy and you have to go a lot slower. But if we had much higher intensity pulses, we could actually get a lot more data over these cables and it would allow us to communicate at speeds of up to 100 gigabit per second on every single fiber. If you add all those fibers up, it could actually increase the bandwidth that we would have and we could use by up to 100 fold, allowing essentially global communication at a rate we've never seen before. And this is what we could use high intensity <coughs> optical impulses for. Thank you very much. I thought he was going to talk about how these short pulses were being used to uh, cool down atoms at the, to study their quantum behavior, but that's a very good practical uh, explanation of something that we will all relate to and we will be able to understand. Thank you very much. <laughs>